not the death of a sinner, but rather that he should turn from his sin and be saved, mercifully look upon the frailty of our mortal nature, and of thy goodness vouchsafe to bless these ashes, now set upon our heads for a token of humanity, and to obtain thy pardon, that we, knowing that we are but dust, and that for our unworthiness unto dust we shall return, may through thy mercy be found meet to receive forgiveness of all our sins and those good things which thou hast promised to the penitent. Through thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, God, world without end. Amen. and unto dust thou shalt return. Remember, O man, that thou art dust, and unto dust thou shalt return. be with you. 
and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has created us out of the dust of the earth, grant we beseech thee that these ashes may be unto us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by thy most gracious gift that we are given life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So Ben Victor Hawkins sent some inquisitory from a bit to remember. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritu is on foot. erat in principio et nunc et et in secula Bless the Lord, who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of those who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. reading from the book of Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness there is spread upon the mountains a great and powerful people. Their like has never been from from of old, nor will be again after them through the years of all generations. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and repents of evil. Who knows whether he will not turn and repent and leave a blessing behind him, a cereal offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber, between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and make not thy heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say amongst the people, Where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We beseech you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him then, we entreat you not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at the acceptable time I have listened to you and helped you on the day of salvation. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with it, our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, tumults, labors, watching, hunger, by purity, knowledge, forbearance, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well-known, as dying and behold we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before men in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give alms, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by men. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by men, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consume, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. When I was recovering from surgery this time last year, I could chart my progress by what I was watching on TV. When I was in the hospital, and right when I got home, I watched a lot of the very soothing Great British Baking Show. When my mind cleared a bit, I turned to Stephen Fry's odd game show, QI, with its quiet, understated, eccentric, and erudite humor. As I got better, I could watch shows with a plot. And by the time I was watching Law and Order SVU, I knew it was time to come back to work. Perhaps I shouldn't admit this, but I've developed a soft spot for reruns of SVU and criminal intent. And just the other day, there was an episode of the latter in which an alibi hinged on Ash Wednesday ashes. The detectives were able to prove that a suspect had been in church on Ash Wednesday and clear him as they found the cross-shaped residue of ashes inside his ski cap. In the discussion that ensued, one of the detectives casually remarked that it was important to Catholics not to wash off the ashes and to keep them on for as long as possible. I smiled to myself and immediately thought about the gospel appointed for today that reminds us that when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by men, but by your Father who is in secret. Indeed, I was always taught that taking on the ashes was much more important than wearing them for everyone to see. This year, 
that won't be a problem for most people. This is the year of Ash Wednesday without the general imposition of ashes. Priests all over have racked their brains about how we might safely distribute the ashes we usually smear with our thumb on people's foreheads. My colleagues and I came up with many ideas, all elaborate and overly complicated, in a genuine effort to keep us all safe. In the end, most of us decided that it was safest if we don't impose ashes this year, either in church or ashes to go style, as has become fashionable in many places. In the end, I came to believe that experiencing an Ash Wednesday without the imposition of ashes was perhaps an opportunity to look at this symbol and better understand what we are actually doing as we begin the season of Lent, to try and understand what it is that we are actually taking on for these days that lie ahead of us between now and Easter. Although the imposition of ashes on Ash Wednesday is a powerful symbol, the Church has never considered it to be a sacrament in the same way as baptism, Eucharist, or Holy Unction the three traditional Catholic sacraments associated with both touch and an elemental material. The water of baptism, the bread of Eucharist, or the oil of unction, all administered at the hand of a priest, are outward and visible expressions of Jesus' special presence with us and the inward grace that they impart. The ashes, historically made from the burnt remains of the palm fronds blessed the previous year on Palm Sunday, are a symbol of the earth to which our bodies return when we die, of what our own bodies become in death as they decay and are reincorporated into the ground, mixed with all the other elements of creation. Remember that thou art dust, and unto dust thou shalt return. They are a poetic reminder that we are connected with all things in creation, in many ways inseparable from the stuff of the cosmos, and at the same time human, mortal, and specifically not, as we will hear the serpent tempt Adam and Eve this coming Sunday, divine, like God or some gods. The ashes are not a localization of grace or of the love of God into the present moment. The ashes of Ash Wednesday are like a slap in the face, a wake-up call to our fragility, our imperfection, our limitations. It is something we take on as part of our own spiritual practice at the beginning of Lent as we make our preparations to celebrate the gift that God has given us all in the Paschal Mystery that we shall celebrate at the end of this season. The detective's remarks on law and order about how people feel the need to wear and more importantly, show the ashes to the world were an apt observation. It has been drilled into many that we are to carry the ashes as a badge to outwardly demonstrate our faith to others. But that's not the point. We need not show them to the world for us to remember that thou art dust, and unto dust thou shalt return. We can bear this reminder without showing the ashes as we set out upon an intentional period of reflection and transformation. Rather than focus upon the ashes, keeping the ashes, holding on to them as Peter wanted to hold on to that moment on the mountain when Jesus was transfigured and met Moses and Elijah and wanted to build those booths, we should see those ashes as the first step that they are. They are the beginning of our Lenten journey of repentance, of that metanoia that John the Baptist and Jesus preached that will transform us, allow us to become more than ourselves, accept our imperfections, the mortality of our flesh, and still enter into a relationship with God and with each other that is truly life-giving. On this Ash Wednesday without ashes, when we may have feelings about not receiving that smudge on our foreheads, not wearing it for others to see, we can receive comfort and inspiration from today's gospel. For what does Jesus advise us to do? Beware of practicing your piety before men in order to be seen by them. Jesus goes even and reminds us, when you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by men. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, 
that your fasting may not be seen by men, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Wash your face, anoint your head, hold your head up high as you do the work to which you are called, to understand that within the limits of our humanity, we have been called with joy and expectation to be a part of the work God has begun in the inauguration of the kingdom. Indeed, today's lessons are filled with that clarity and sense of joy that can come with fasting, the sense of opportunity, of potential, of the possibilities that become open to us. Blow the trumpet in Zion, Joel tells us. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Our starting place is a reminder of who we are, but dust. Our starting place is not meant to make us feel bad or ashamed. We are humiliated only in being reminded that we come from that hummus, that ground earth of which our world is made. We are explicitly reminded that human as we are, we have cause to rejoice, to see the way ahead as hopeful, as leading to God's victory over the forces of evil and death that limit us, that keep us from perfecting our humanity and participating in the life of God. In the epistle, we are told that we've come to a crossroads, to a moment when we are to make a choice. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Put, we put no obstacle in any way so that no fault may be found with our ministry, but as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way through great endurance, in affliction, heart, calamities, beatings, imprisonment, tumults, labors, watching, hunger. By purity, knowledge, forbearance, kindness, and the Holy Spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. As ever with God, nothing is easy. Nothing is simply handed to us. But what awaits us when we take on the work of fasting, this work of accepting our humanity that God sets before us is truly eternal life that transcends all the ashes and dust. To all the world, we may look like fools tilting at windmills, but in reality, something else is happening. We are treated as imposters and yet are true as unknown and yet well-known, as dying and behold we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The transformation upon which we embark in Lent can lead us to extraordinary places in our mortal lives. It can shift us and align all our work with the work of God and in and through the hardships we may face along the way, all the ashes of sin, disease, and death, we anoint our heads and wash our faces and keep moving in the direction of that resurrection life that awaits us on the other side of Easter. This Ash Wednesday, I have the privilege of taking on the ashes for our community. I hope that when I said those words, first to myself and then to William, that you said them to yourselves at home. If you can still do that, if you haven't, remember that thou art dust, and unto dust thou shalt return. It's true. What I promise you is that after this service, I shall wash my face and turn with joy to the work of Lent, of repentance, and of transformation. And I commend you to do the same and join with me whether you have soot on your foreheads tonight or not. Amen. and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, 
that all who confess thy name may be united in thy truth, live together in thy love, and reveal thy glory in the world. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and for Andy, Alan, and Mary, our bishop. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Anglican Church of Canada. In the Diocese of New York, we pray for the Church of the Transfiguration in Manhattan. We pray for our companion parish, St. Xavier of Pimlico, London. We pray for those in formation for holy orders, especially Leanne, Stephen, Mary, and Pam. Lord, in thy mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for the leaders of the nations, especially our nation, for Joseph, President of the United States of America, Andrew, Governor of the State of New York, Bill, Mayor of the City of New York, and for all those in the legislature and the judiciary. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all reverence for the earth as thine own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to thine honor and glory. Lord, in thy mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of thy salvation. We pray for those throughout the world affected by the coronavirus pandemic, for those who have fallen ill, and their families and friends, for those who have died, for the bereaved, and for all those who minister to them and their needs. We pray for those of our parish family who desire our prayers, especially for Kathleen, Rachel, Gaylord, John, Anna Christina, Nancy, Forrest, Kent, Jane, Anne, Bridget, Julia, Carmen, Betty Ann, Colton, Ian, Mary, Daniel, Claudia, Susan, Stella, Art, Gerald, Betty, Howard, and Laura. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to thy mercy all who have died, and that thy will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with Our Lady St. Mary, St. Ignatius of Antioch, and all thy saints in thine eternal kingdom. And we pray for those whose anniversary of death falls at this time, including George W. Young, benefactor, Josephine A. Kraut, and Elizabeth Clare. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who declareth thy glory and showeth forth thy handiwork in the heavens and in the earth, deliver us, we beseech thee, in our several occupations from the service of self alone, that we may do the work which thou givest us to do in truth and be and for the common for the sake of him who came among us as the one that served thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost on God, world without end. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. 
Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant us grace that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you unto everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord.
brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable unto the Lord our God. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at thy hand, to the praise and glory of the Lord, both to our benefit and that of all the holy church. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we Lord, Evermore praising and saying, Glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with thee thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son has commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's 
holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, that we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all those who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that we may dwell in him and he in us. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bound duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Da propitius pacem in diebus nostri sutope misericordia tua juti et apocato sinus semper liberi et ab omni perturbationi securi periundum Christum dominum nostrum filium tuum qui tecum libera reniat in unitate spiritu sancti deus Romnia secula seculorum. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. On your stay, qui polis peccata mundi. I check for to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Body of the Lord Jesus Christ.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most, most heartily, heartily thank, thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in, myst in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech Thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with Thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as Thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with Thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. A very warm welcome to each and every one of you on this Ash Wednesday to St. Ignatius of Antioch. I'm so sorry that we couldn't have welcomed you at 7.30 in the morning or just afternoon or here in person today, but that is just where we are and where we continue to be. I am honored that you choose to tune in and join us on the live stream. Join us by watching from the website or by watching on YouTube, especially for a feast like this, a fast like this, really, a, a solemn feria, a, a fast like this where, um, where, where, where you really, in, in normal years, feel very engaged by taking on the ashes. And, um, and, and I just hope and pray that we're, we're certainly back uh, doing this, this service with you in a full church next year. Now, tomorrow we have evening prayer at 6 o'clock followed immediately by our new adult formation series on uh, global mission in the Episcopal Church and in the Diocese of New York, where we will learn about the sustainable development goals of the United Nations, to which uh, the Episcopal Church and the Anglican Communion uh, has been a party and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, which, we, we, which we support. And uh, that, that session will be led by Pamela Tang, our deacon postulant, who happens to chair our diocesan uh, global Mission Committee. So she's really the expert on this, and it should be a really terrific series of uh, these three next three Thursday nights. Friday we have the great uh, we have the great litany at noon, and then Friday night at six uh, we will be featuring on our YouTube channel Stations of the Cross, and then at six thirty we will be premiering our new uh, recording of Benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. Um, and if you tuned in last year, um, it's not very different, but it is, I think, a better recording. And I think that it's, um, I, I, I like the idea that we've done, it, we've done it fresh for you for this season of Lent. Those services of Stations of the Cross and Benediction will be on, on our YouTube channel and you can have access to them from our website really any time during Lent. But, we, but since it's our practice here on Friday nights to uh, pray the Stations and then celebrate Benediction, we're going to feature them every, every Friday night uh, uh, it, it, during, during, during this coming Lent. And on Sunday, we hope you join us on the live stream at 11 a.m. Eastern Time for uh, the, the Solemn Mass of the first Sunday of Lent. Of course, we have Office of the Dead still on Saturday. We haven't, we haven't forgotten about that either. There's lots of things happening at St. Ignatius, even though we can't gather together. And I'm so glad that you are a part of what we're doing. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Humble your heads before God. Keep this thy family, O Lord, with thy never-failing mercy, that relying solely upon the help of thy heavenly grace, they may be upheld by thy divine protection through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.